Okay, so we're finally all set up. I wrote out all the uh, strength points. I hope I put them all in pencil. Put the pen away so I don't fuck up. Um, I fucked up at the beginning. Didn't put leave room for the detachments by nationality. So I've got those all in place now. And I got the uh, uh, depots, not depots, uh, the magazines where they belong. Um, this is a tricky game, right? It's one that I'm going to blunder around trying to find my way through. So let's try to dissect what the situation is at the beginning here. Right now, the French have a fortified line here that gives me quite a bit of capability for interceptions and the like um, across the river. What river is that? That's the Schelt River. Hmm. Okay. Um, and there's not really a strong fortified line of any kind sitting across. Uh, I get a little confused by the colors. I'm like, oh, this must be French. No. <laughs> the orange is just bigger. Um, The, uh, there, there's no, no real defensive line that the Dutch have up in the Netherlands. So we're going to be able to continue pushing um, beyond fairly easily. But that's where the mass of the Allied forces are to begin with. <coughs> Down here, we have someone facing against uh, this cat and hat or whatever facing up against the Imperial Army. Imperial Army is 25. The French Army is smaller. The other half is here under Villar and is kind of in the open and can just start taking stuff. However, we have to look a little bit at this. So, if we look here, this is the 1708 line, which gets kind of confusing. The main line runs down here. Uh, so let's see. Is Lorraine... It's kind of hard to tell what the fuck is going on um, in terms of command, you know, in terms of who owns what at the beginning. Uh, so... Jesus, I can't read. I'm going to have to swap glasses. I brought my uh, my reasonable glasses down because I had trouble sorting the counters. And, but under this light, I can see them pretty well. But I can't see this shit. I think part of the problem is that this map doesn't reproduce what's on this map. Uh, if we zoom way in here, uh, not that far. Weigh in on this. Now, the fact that I, I'm at uh, three times here, the fact that I can't see this, but that looks like it starts with a T. I believe that's Trevitz there. And this... Uh, is Sarlos. Well... Oh, maybe this is... Tubenville or whatever, and Metz. Yeah, okay. I'm just, oh, that's nice and blurry. Sorry about that. Um, but I'm realizing it's not my eyes that are the problem here. That is just too fucking tiny. You know, if I, I'm zooming in in the camera and I can't get a, a focus in on it. Yeah, that's not just me. Now, I do have some, um, some more magnifying type glasses, but that is an unplayable situation. It only really matters right now because what I want to be able to see is who owns what and what I found out is this and this are here. This is Massau down there I guess which is part of France so we haven't gained all of Lorraine yet 
And what about this Teva cell? We own that, right? Yeah, you, you see what kind of mess we're in here. And if we were trying to calculate out victory points, um, for the smaller scenarios, this would be hellish. Luckily, I don't think I've ever started and said, I'll play a smaller scenario. It's just not really my style. Okay. <clears throat> so, let me uh, swap my glasses out because I don't want these things to get dirty if I can help it. In a lot of ways, as if this were one of the Levian campaign games like I just played, or uh, certain CDGs or whatever, you really do have to kind of get a grasp on what the hell I'm trying to do, well, you don't have to know what I'm trying to do, but I have to have a grasp on what the hell I'm trying to do with any given power, how I'm trying to do things. This isn't just a, hey, I can look at the numbers and figure out what's going on, and it's not a simple... So the ideas of forcing lines and setting up so that I can intercept and everything like that is actually fairly complex um, in terms of the thinking more complex than it would be in a bubble map and most hex map uh, most uh, hex encounter games <coughs> don't have this level of uh, thinking involved in them honestly of course if you know me i don't like thinking very much so we look at the sequence and okay primary magazine phase we can't do anything secondary magazine we don't want to do anything particularly, I guess. We're only allowed to put the magazines in places where we want to go. But let's think again. What are we planning on doing, right? Uh, what do we own here? Again, problematic, right? I think we own up to there. Um, looking at the color of the maps. We want to keep the Imperials busy enough that they don't go invade Bavaria. Because it's absolutely defenseless right now. Villar is going to have some capacity to move places. I am going to put this bugger, I think, here in Tionville. That's an important place. In another war. If that's what I'm allowed to do. I think that's here. This is Luxembourg, I guess. Actually, I think I'll push it out to Luxembourg if that's the case. Because if this is Trevets, Luxembourg is going to be in French territory. Seems like a good idea. It's protected by the city, so it's of a little bit more value. I don't know if I need that, but what the hell. It gives me some flexibility. Over on this side, God, this is hard. I can't read this shit. I don't even have a regular magnifying glass anymore. Yeah. We hope the camera can help. Uh, so I think this is going to be the line for the United Provinces coming across there. Antwerp we have taken. I hope that's Antwerp. I guess it is. And this is Bergen op Zoom and wherever the... Sorry about the speed there. Oh, whatever the Dutch army is sitting on is this other one here. And Boufflair is on Lezo, which now I'm completely lost, but I'm assuming is down here. With Maastricht over there. Ah, uh, that can't be. That can't be because that's all, all, all orange shit me. Uh, yeah. Where's Maastricht? Uh, okay, Maastricht is right there. 
that little green bit there, which means Lezo is gonna be here. This looks like it's covered in orange before it's not. Okay, so that's, that's what's going on up there. Um, I should be aware of the troop strengths at the beginning of the game, or maybe I shouldn't, because at the beginning of campaign season, I wouldn't be, right? But right now, because I'm trying to get used to things, we're looking at second detachment only has 10 troops in it, while Boufflers, with his first army, is my big force. So... The idea of positioning, now what, what is the cost of, is that a major river or a minor river? That's a minor river, that's only going to be one extra, no, that's no cost to cross. So I can, one, two, three, I can occupy, I can defend any of this with Baudemar and his second army. His second army is not very big, but whatever. That means Boufflair probably wants to try to take Maastricht. It's important and big. <laughs> um, but it looks like it's what I'm set up to do. I will put... Which army is this? I will put the first army magazine down here at Liege. Be really helpful if there were like, I don't know, some like if it was a markable map so you could draw and I might want to throw a piece of plexi over it so that I, I could draw the border lines um, as they change throughout the game. We'll see at the end of the first year if I want if I want to do that right now <sighs> right now at least I have them over here. okay so yeah. Now, I do not have a defensive line here, but what I do have is a bunch of fortresses. And... A detachment or small army may reinforce... No, that's not it. What we're looking for here is the interception but it may not be under that section. Because things are so poorly defined in this. Let's look at the, the optional rules because maybe, maybe I'm just remembering them. Automatic activation for moving into fortresses. Allow units to be automatically activated for interception when an enemy force moves into a front. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, yeah. All right. And I don't know if all these optionals are meant to improve the historicity of the game or if that's just a, hey, let's make the game a little easier uh, instead of the fortified line. But I'm going to play with them as if they're historically accurate. Okay, so I've got no foe here, nobody who, who can intercept there. Now, if Boufflair starts moving across the river or whatever, this detachment could intercept, but that would probably be really bad because then the detachment's launching the attack and paying the movement point cost and whatever. Over here, though, I'm not close enough. So let me... Uh, I guess I'll put a depot up there. I may end up moving a little closer to their line there. This is all very... Okay. French activity phase. I find me a couple of dice. We're going to try to activate... I feel like he's fine with what he's at. I'm going to try to activate Boufflair. He needs a 3 through 8 to activate. He does not activate, so I'll leave him facing the way he is. 
I'll attempt to activate Valar. He needs a 4 through 11 to activate. Hey, now I'm going to tilt his force so I know that I can move it. And Kalaneh needs that big 3 through 8. Nope. Okay. So I've got one force I can activate. Um, gosh, I don't know how many moving points I have. I think it's eight. I know it costs eight to do some things. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to back off <laughs> and take a break because just getting to this point has been very, very difficult. Right? The rules seem to make sense and everything, but now trying to find information in them and, and trying to think about the special circumstances that the game provides has made life very, very difficult. Plus, I'm almost out of battery, and I'm almost out of tea, I'm out of pipe. It's, a, it's time for a little pause. Right, tea and pipe mostly fixed. Let's see if we can move a piece. <laughs> um, so, I actually did a couple of things in between. Uh, I sent out a check for a game I've been looking for for a while. It's a player's edition, you know, not missing a couple of pieces, not in great condition, of uh, Air Empire. I managed to see that game once. I played it. It was a pretty cool little economic game, uh, but it went at auction. Pristine copy for 60 bucks. Now, I'm having to pay shipping, so, you know, the five bucks I'm paying for the game is ridiculously low, but the 20 bucks I'm paying in shipping is ridiculously high. But, you know, I, I buy magazine games uh, sometimes, and it ends up costing me 20 bucks, you know, with the, like, seven dollar uh, priority mail shipping that people want to use. Um, and it's probably the cheapest way to, to, to send something unless, unless you go out of your way and send it media rate. You could send like, <laughs> anyway. Uh, but in addition, I checked, uh, my BGG account and somebody actually posted to the intro. Uh, they've done a complete rewrite of the rules and I took a glimpse at it. And, you know, it's kind of like my video in the sense that it's like there's a lot of commentary <laughs> in it talking about, well, here's what I think they meant and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if it would make a better resource in terms of uh, trying, trying to, to access the rules. I'll say this much, though. It's at uh, 23 pages. And what is this? Uh, this starts at 17 and goes to 28. So we're talking 12 pages. 12 pages, but a fair amount of its scenarios and whatnot. Um, yeah, you, you know, it, it doubles in size when you try, try to nail everything down. And, and, and this is... I mean, the worst case problem of this is Magic Realm, the player uh, design, the players designed rules of Magic Realm, which went from, I don't know, like a 24 page rule book to over a hundred pages when they tried to nail everything down. Um, I have to say this is way worse than it should be. And again, there's running commentary in, in that, trying to present different ideas and everything. But it is generally a problem, is that you see rules bloat nowadays because people are trying to nail everything down. Um, these rules could have been written a lot better and could have been presented a lot better. 3W is about as bad as it gets. But I also don't want them double the size. Uh, anyway, I'm used to these, so we're going to go with them, even though I don't know where I can find what I'm looking for. What is it that I'm looking for? I don't remember. So that's fine. All right, what is my target here? Uh, do I want to go for Saurlus? Is that, is that my goal? I mean, the idea of leaving fortresses behind doesn't work all that well, in my opinion. 
However, yeah, because I couldn't trace supply through here. Of course, I could trace it through here. But let's go for Sourless. And we have no Siege Engine. This cost me two movement points. And we look at the Siege rules. If I can find them. Which is going to cost me six movement points. Now I need two to one odds to succeed in this. Valars has what is the fourth French army, which is ten. I'm facing two, so I have five to one. We look at the siege table. This is a second class fortress, so we'll be on the better table. And garrison size, there isn't one, essentially. Uh, attacker to defender odds, I've got five to one, so I get a plus one. I have no siege train, so that I'm down to a minus one. Oh, multiple siege trains. There's no defending leader. And the siege has not gone. So I think I was at a total of minus one on two dice. We get an 11, that goes down to a 10. The town surrenders. Okay. I have to give up two strength points to take this. I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm going to erase things. This is so beautiful. I kind of don't want to have to remake it. Uh, and then I'll put a flag here to remind me that I took this. And that's the French turn, I think. Yeah. All right. So now we're over to the English side or the Allied side. And wow. <laughs> Yes, I moved one piece. I did one thing. It was an impressive thing, but it's all I did. However, I do feel kind of burned out by it. Uh, it's hard getting used to such a different system. So let me, let me see what the allies might want to do. I definitely want to move forces forward. There's no question of that. The second Dutch army is only 15 strength points. That's not really enough for me to challenge the French. So I think I have to bring reserves up for anything to happen here. What can I do with the Imperial army? I'm in kind of a defensive position the Imperial Army is 25 strength points, which is rather large. Since he's out of range for an interception, I could make a move. Hey, what's this? What's that? That's some kind of bridge or something. Ooh, ooh. But it still fucks you up in terms of uh, movement cost, etc. So I think I'm going to go for Lautenberg here if I can. Um, but let's roll for my commands. There's no real cost to rolling to see if you get to move. So let's start with this. He's on that three to eight table. Oh, I had to put, uh, put some things down. Okay. Uh, Baradour here is first Imperial Army. Let's give him a little wagon. And... We're going to put this up at Phillipsburg in case things go south real bad and real fast. Uh, just so we have a supply source there. We are going to look at the Brits. The Brits <coughs> have a long way that they can travel. They have two wagons. Uh, the major river only costs one extra movement point. So coming from here, one, two, three, four, I could reach here. So putting one down here seems reasonable, but I may also be traveling along the Scheldt or something like that, so I'll put one there, just so I don't have to think too hard about it. Uh, the Dutch First Army. 
I want to put a second one down. Wow, I have lousy leaders <laughs> at this point. So, I don't know, we'll, we'll put this down at Breda. I want to be on a broader front. The Dutch Second Army, again, I want to be on a broader front. So I will put this over here. Now, when do we check supplies? So, supplies aren't that big a deal. They're just your stacking limitation, I think, and for siege. But, um, we're up here in average we can have 20 without a magazine, so we're not in any trouble there. There's plenty of forage. All right, let's start rolling. Uh, we roll for that. I don't, I, I thought I rolled, but then I may have decided otherwise. But we get a, we get a move there. So I'll turn him. This second detachment here that's not allowed to move. It doesn't have a commander. Why does it exist without a commander? That's a weird situation that you probably will never see again in the game. Uh, Cahorn is slow as hell. Two to seven. Don't know that I want to do anything with him. He's sitting on the second army, which I said was 15. Yeah, I doubt that I want to do anything with him. Uh, the English under Athlon or something like that. We'll get to move. Uh, Nasa Sour up there. We'll get to move. Tilly. He's got the detachment. He'll get to move. Okay. So what do we do? <laughs> Here I could force march, but force marching seems really, really dangerous to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my eight movement points. I spend one, two to get here. It costs just one extra to go there. And I'm going to siege that uh, town. I don't think I take care of the sieges until all the movement point costs are done. That would seem val uh, reasonable to me. This guy's not going to move. What about walking across the Scheldt? It's uh, somewhere. Maybe it tells me here. Nothing there. Crap, crap, crap. Additional movement point costs. Uh, forces totaling up to 50 British or Dutch SP may cross the Scheldt Estuary or the islands as if they were major rivers. Eh, I don't know how big a, an advantage that is. Um, well, the Brits are tiny. Okay. So, one, two. What did we say we had for movements? Do we indeed have eight? I, I just kind of assumed that. The movement allowance for armies and detachments is eight. The allowance for siege trains is six. I'm hauling a siege train with me. One, two, three, four, crossing the Scheldt, or crossing the major river. Five, six, seven, eight. I'll move down to Breda. I'm out of supply, but again, doesn't make a damn bit of difference. I'm leaving my uh, siege train because it's allowed to move independently. These forces, again, it's less than 50 total, I believe. This is the first army, 22, that gets me up to 30. So one, two, three, and we're 
over this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. We join the Brits. We are now a combined force with command ratings of 7-0, for what it's worth, of 30 strength points. And that's fine. Tilly, where's Tilly going? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're in supply from the magazine, if that matters. The magazines aren't that important unless you're creating really big armies, right? <laughs> Uh, and so far, most of the armies are pretty small. We do have a 45 for the French First Army under Boufflers, so he has to kind of stay. He has to kind of think about things. Although he's in fertile terrain, so he's fine. He doesn't need his magazines unless he's sieging. On to the siege. What do we got here? We got the First Imperial Army at 25 up against a three. That's six to one. No, uh, plus one, no siege train, minus one total, minus one total. I roll a bad thing, I get an A, so uh, the Imperial Army loses a strength point, which I'll just mark this way. I may just erase, I don't know. And then I think that is the end of an entire player turn. Or an entire game turn. As you can see, you know, it. I'm going through a lot of mental effort to figure out what I'm doing, but the actual play of the game, there isn't that much going on. Now, I do have to do something to mark that this siege is underway. Instead of putting something under or whatever, see the bread markers mean one thing. The, I'm going to kind of put this here for now. We'll see how well this works. I may end up working with something else, but until I find my sneeze dice uh, or, or something equally disturbing, um, I don't really want to have a ton of different kinds of counters in, in, on the board. And that's that. I realized I screwed up last turn. I mean, I didn't violate rules, but uh, there was a potential interception here. Yeah, it was supposed to go up and hit this space, not the space I did. I'll stick with the results I had, but <laughs> it's not good. It, it, it's not optimal to do things like that. All right. Um, French magazine phase. Uh, do I want to move any magazines over? Well, here's the question. French Third Army is only 15. I know the Imperial Army's size is larger. A dead interception wouldn't have been a wise move. So, it's probably just fine that I did what I did. Um, I'm not going to move my primary magazine for that. Over here, I ca captured this. I don't want to shift my primary magazine, but, and I should actually, you know, wait until the secondary magazine phase, but I am going to shift the secondary ma magazine over here uh, to Sarajus. I don't know. Oh, what's up with Mouffler? What is he up to there? That's an odd place for him to be. Ah, he didn't move, that's why. Okay. We will leave things as they are. Since I didn't move, that doesn't seem too unreasonable. And here, I'm pretty sure that that French second army is not very big. So... And I don't particularly want to combine. He's serving some purpose here by defending that line, but you know, I'm outnumbered if the allies go hit that line and then it sucks. Uh, okay. So let's roll some dice for our leaders. Uh, 
cat and that. No movement for him. Valar? Valar is active. Bouffler. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, Bouffler gets active. So I'm a three to eight. Don't know if I want to move him. And this other guy. Ten, not active. So I have two active armies. Gotta step away and think. This is gonna be hellish again. I don't know who owns Liao there. This is horrible. Um, a blown up version of this would be really kind of useful. Maybe that guy has it among his uh, among his things to make this game playable. So what we're looking at is south of Antwerp. Oh, God damn it. Can't blow it up enough. Yeah, it's not working with the camera and <laughs> I honestly don't have a magnifying glass. Let's see if my special reading glasses that I got before, you know, I started getting bad enough that they had to include it in my prescription will help. We had decided this before. This is actually French. This is uh, there. Now this thing that looks like a river, that's one of the national boundaries for 1704. <laughs> Much of the game is gonna be spent on this, on trying to determine, hey, who owns this? Who doesn't? Um, again, if I get a piece of plexi on this, I could draw the line and then I wouldn't make the mistake of having to check this again. But on the other hand, <laughs> all right, anyhow, uh, what the hell does Buffler want to do? He's sitting on the French First Army, which is my big striking force. I'm within range right now. One, two, three, four to get to here with an interception. So if the Allies try to, to take advantage, I'll have something I can do with that. Uh, at the same time, I'm thinking I kind of want to coordinate these forces. Lucky for me, they're small enough. They're not going to come anywhere near causing me issues uh, with the strength. So I can get my, you know, even though I set my depot up here and uh, my secondary here, uh, it, it's really not a big deal as long as I'm not pushing the sieges forward. And I don't really see continuing on and weakening my army further by taking more sieges when what I really have to do is I have to defeat that Imperial Army. Now that Imperial Army has almost as good a leader, well, he has as good a leader as I have here. Uh, Villar is one of my better leaders though. What about Boufflair? Boufflair, uh, I believe he was the guy who defended at Lille during this, <coughs> this uh, series of campaigns, during the War of Spanish Succession. Um, where do we go? Well, what do we know about Maastricht and what's holding it? We wouldn't know normally. That's like 21 strength points. That's, that's a big siege. I kind of don't feel like we have the opportunity to take it. We're also one, two, three, four, within range of a fair number of forces if we move to here where we would be Besieged, but if we move here, one, two, three, four, we defend that entire line with Boufflair. So I think he is merely going to move one hex up and call that a day. It doesn't feel very uh, compelling. That's our biggest force. Uh, however, This was one, two. I can move forward three, four, five. Lay siege here to this Stevenswart. I might take it all at once. And it's within six, right? One, two, three, four, five. Now, the Dutch could can't intercept me. They don't have a leader. Yeah, let's go to here and institute a siege there. 
With these guys, I do want to get them closer together. Uh, may not be wise. Let's leave our wagon there. And how do we want to move? One, two, three. Four, five, six. Four, how about four, five? I could be intercepted. One, two, three, four. It would require an activation roll. Let's, what did we do? One, two, three, four, five. Let's get a die there to remind me of how far I've moved. <laughs> okay. I could be intercepted as I enter that hex. Uh, actually, I don't think I can because there's a fortress there. I don't think I'm allowed to be intercepted uh, where there's a fort. One, two, three, four. Yeah, he's not allowed to just slice through those, those fortifications. Okay, so that was five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to combine these two armies here. Nothing changes. But the leadership value is now an 8 plus 2 instead of two different forces. Ideally, had I realized what I wanted to do if I got his movement, I would have shifted my secondary um, magazine down there, uh, my depot down there. Or they, they're called secondary magazines. But I would have shifted... Uh, you know, so that I'd be in range if I wanted to siege, but I really don't want to siege. I want to drive him out of out of uh, here, and that means I have a siege up here with Boufflair, who has a siege artillery. He's got his first army at forty-five, facing two. Let's take a look. 45 to 2 sounds like plus 2. Okay. So we're at plus 2 on the 2 die roll. We get a 7. That's an honors of war. I want to grant it. That will create... It's not to my best advantage to make it a Dutch unit. But it's Dutch, man. <laughs> so that's going to be two strength points of Dutch who are relieved. And they can go to the nearest place. That'll be Roermond here. Another stupid little garrison. And meanwhile, this goes down to 43. And we get us a flag here. This is destroyed. I don't believe it's captured in any sense of the word, but I'm not positive about that. Uh, because there was something somewhere <laughs> that had, if I capture a magazine, or maybe it was a siege gun, um, that's going to be worth a point. So let's look at prisoner exchange. I think that's where it is. Siege trains are destroyed on capture, but the captive player earns a point. Yeah, I don't think there's any points for this thing. So it just comes off the map, and he'd be able to place it again. And the same is with any magazine. Uh, we successfully captured something. Hey, that's great. We go on to the Allied turn. Okay, so down here, to begin things off, the Imperials want to continue their siege. Um, if they can avoid a, a pitched battle and be on the initiative and capture things, that's overall for the best. Yeah, it's going to weaken my army and eventually Valar is going to hit me and that's going to suck. But it doesn't really make a hell of a lot of difference. I'm a little curious. So this is, uh, what, third and fourth armies. Between them, they're 23 strength points. I have no idea what kind of terrain that's in, but it is a, a garrison of a fortress. At least I could make part of it a garrison of a fortress, so I'm not really worried about the supply and being so far away. What are the effects of being out of supply? Damn, I don't remember. Did you just die? Um, okay. 
Moving up here, the question is whether I want to face Boufflers with the main French army, with what I've got, which is the British, sorry, huh, this looks like 18, this looks like 8. That's a significant difference. Let's check which one it is. Campaign game uses the 1702 scenario. British Army alone, that should be an 18, not an 8. Okay, so I have almost as big an army between uh, the British and the first Dutch. Not violating any of my conditions by going there. I also have the second Dutch under Coherne. Of course, that would make things really complicated. Where are the Brits? Under here. Leadership is not pleasant. Second Dutch adds another 15. That's beginning to look like a force that I would like to push forward. So I'm going to bring the British magazine here. And I'll put the secondary here. Assuming that's Dutch territory because, you know, this dashed line and whatnot. Uh, and this says 2UP, so I think uh, that is part of the Uni United Provinces right now, Maastricht. What are my other supply sources? What is my supply range? Why can't I remember these things? Okay. Uh, magazine range is five movement points. And... If I don't have supply, what happens? You lose half your, your excess each turn that you end up out of supply. That would be bad. So I can't go very far. One, two. Oh, I got to watch out. Boufflair could in intercept me. One, he can intercept there. That may not be a good idea. I also don't get to move yet. Uh, so... That also may not be a great idea. All right, this is the first army, the second army here. Second is here. I'm gonna move second over here. Where's first? Oh, first is up here. Jeez, that's stupid. I better not be, uh, I, this is really rich terrain though. I can have 50 without supply. Now, 30, 40, 55, I don't want everybody gathered together. Um, but yeah, let's move the first, this will be three, four, five, or no, two, three, four. Yeah, let's move the first over here as well. Let's get ourselves in a position where we can coordinate all the forces. We roll for movement. I'm not going to move him, so I'm not going to roll. Uh, seven for whoever's on top there, the tan guy. Seven means eight. He can move. The Brits are also a seven. Five, they can move. Um, actually, they're a coordinated force, so I would have only had to roll once. I don't have to keep him that way. This other guy is an is a six, Koharn. He's a shitty old six. He needs a two through seven. He also can move. All right. One, collect up two, three, four, five. Now, as I'm moving, does Boufflair want to intercept anything? It's the entire Allied army. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea to be the attacker. 
So everybody, I got tweezers here. Everybody's gonna end up there. For that I should check Tilly. Yeah, he's able to move too. What does Tilly have with him? He has a detachment that I can't read. The first attachment there. Uh, he's kind of in danger though. So first uh, Dutch detachment is another 15. That's very powerful addition. Everything's in range, right? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, because Antwerp provides a zone of control, so I can't move through here. Um, here's the problem. If I move Tilly, Boufflaire can engage. And I don't think I want to take a chance on that because I can't intercept an interception or anything along those lines. So I think Tilly is stuck where he is. And that gets us Not quite through two turns, because we have a siege here. The Imperial first is 24. Lost one. Divided by three is eight to one. Which gives me plus one, total of minus one on the die roll again. And I get hosed again. Oh, those stupid Imperials. I need your agent and, and uh, Marlboro to work together. But this isn't that period of the game. And so we go on to the May 1st turn. I'm going to load it up because you're seeing a lot of the base mechanisms here. Yeah, you didn't see an interception happen or a battle or anything like that. But I think it's giving an idea of the cost of each fucking little decision that you have to make in this game. Oh, I had another plus one. That would have brought me to four. So actually I did not lose that strength point. Like with any of these types of, you know, when you're facing a new type of game, new concepts and everything, it is definitely harder. It's harder to process, you know, what things can I do? What can I get away with and everything? Um, so, don't take that in as entirely. It's just, there is a big curve to the, hey, how do I make my decisions here? And this moves up to a two. And I'll put that kind of like that because I don't know what other positionings I'd use to, to indicate stuff, but to me, that's indicating the siege situation uh, well enough. All right, so let's send this 